NBA 2K20 tutorial number 22. Today, I'm going to show you guys an updated version of all of my defensive settings. We will also study in detail how to switch and shade to recover so we can shut down everything the offense do to us online, offline, or against your friends. If you enjoy my tutorials, make sure you click on the link above for my all 2K20 tutorials playlist where you're going to find plenty of more videos to help you improve your game and most importantly, have more fun. After all of the on-ball defensive tutorials we have gone through together this year, sure, we now got great on-ball D, but what about our center's paint and help defense? Like, how do we manage that? Because from point guard to power forward, like 1-4, through four, we have a lockdown all switch defensive system. But a lot of the time, the 1-5 switch just isn't always feasible, so we can't rely on that. Like, 1-4 switch you see there, that's fantastic. But today we'll complete the deal because I'm going to be showing you guys my specific center defensive settings. And after that, we will have our full set in force to lock down the opposing team all day. So at the end of the video, I will have our full set of defensive settings and how I do them uh, in real time. But right now, what I want to do is we will go over all the essential settings in detail. Now the end goal of our defense is to switch 1 through 4 with maximum help and switch effects. And we also want to have the option to manually control the C on hedge defense when needed or have the computer center lock up the screener while we guard the ball ourselves. In order to achieve a 1 through 4 switch screen defense, just go to your settings and make sure your on ball screen is turned to switch all. And then uh, that will make your hedge automatic and also change stay attached to no. Now don't mess with the on ball screen for center and the hedge for center. All you want to do is change the uh, on ball screen without the center to switch. And then your hedge becomes automatic and turn your stay attached to no. So if you do that, you're going to get a 1 through 4 switch defense. And that's a must this year because the AI is very smart with it. Like when they have to switch, they'll switch. When they don't have to, even though it's a switch defense, they still play the best route. Look at what Portrait is doing here. That's excellent, excellent computer defense. Put me ahead so I can switch to it and play even better defense myself. Now, the next thing you got to do is you got to change your settings to as such so that you get what I call maximum switch defense, especially on help. So on your off-ball screen, uh, keep that at automatic and then have your switch rules off-ball turn to switch all and your screen help rules and drive help rules at automatic. You do that, you're going to get excellent switching on-ball and off-ball. So watch, because off-ball is on all switch here, it gives you very good uh, transition defense. You see, in, in this instance, Beverly is supposed to be guarding Walker in transition. Well, that's the matchup. But he's going to pick up uh, Hayward because poor George, who is Hayward, man, is late. But because you have all switch on off ball, you see Beverly is now picking up ball. And Paul George is going to switch to Kemba Walker. This is actually a lot to ask from 2K. And they do it very well this year. In previous 2Ks, like that transition defense right there is not doable. But this is especially smooth this year if you got your off ball settings to all switch. But there's more to it. With all your help rules on automatic and your off ball switch at switch all, you can see in this clip what maximum switch effects really does, especially during the pick and roll. So as the Celtics attack from the corner there, you can see Shaman is beat and he's kind of fallen behind. I'm controlling green here. I mean, I'm, I'm about to show on this pick and roll just to contain brown. But I see that Beverly is willing to switch. That's a very aggressive switch because he knows Shaman is beaten so he's gonna go switch and pick up ball. I understand that that Beverly is switching over so I'm controlling green to drop. I'm gonna drop and let Beverly pick up Jalen Brown and Shaman to recover. You see right there that's perfect maximum switch defense right there. So this was initially shut down because I actually got over the screen just fine with Beverly. I got over, bumped off Walker, and we're good to go. But Walker is about to hit me with a dribble move here, and I failed to reach. He absolutely destroys Beverly. You can see Beverly is completely out of the picture, so he's done. Like, he's behind the play. But because uh, auto help rules are all on, and all switch off ball kicks in also, you can see Kawhi immediately picks up Kamba to switch onto him as the help defender. That's what this does. Automatic drive help rules with all switch off ball allows your help defender to do not like hesitate at all 
when they have to switch to pick up Matt. Kawhi does just that, like he does a great job at shading Cam by here. And this gives me time to recover. I use the control Kawhi, puts myself in front, contests the shot, Beverly recovers to the passing lane. That's perfect all switch help after Beverly got crossed up. So you switch one through four, that's an absolute guarantee this year. But when your center, your five man, has to play hash defense, 90% of the time, make sure you're controlling the hedge yourself. You see what I'm doing here. I'm switching to Willie Cauley Stein to control the hedge. I, you do this. I do this. Because CPU is a way better on-ball defender than they are as a hedge defender. Like, I control Wally Stein. Look at Draymond Green play his task correctly because it's a simple task. He's guarding ball. The hedge is way more difficult for the computer to play correctly at all times. So control the hedge yourself. Like manually controlling the cedar hedge is the move. But then the next question becomes then what are the best settings? Because just because you're manually controlling at 90% of the time, you still need the correct setting so the AI puts you at a good spot as you switch to the center to defend hedge. Because if you're put behind, you, even if you switch to it yourself, you can't recover. So these are lockdown center defensive settings, alright? Originally, stay attached. Is set to no for everyone and that is actually true because it's going to be no for mostly everyone on the heat so change it to no but what you're going to do is in this case i'm playing the classic 0405 phoenix suns on hall of fame what you want to do is uh amari stoudemire is their center uh, guarding opposing centers you want their off ball pressure at uh moderate but you want to turn the stay attached to on so stay attached for all centers is going to be set to yes and in terms of your uh, on ball screen Make sure it's either over or under depending on the person you're guarding. And your hedge, uh, you can change that to soft hedge if you want. The hedging doesn't matter too much because the key is to stay attached. Change to stay attached to yes and, and you will see what happens. So watch. Here we're playing that defense against the uh, classic Suns. And we, they begin with this 1-4 pick and roll. So obviously we're going to switch it. I switched to Ola Depot, but I brought them go over the screen fine. So smart switch defense, no switch happens. I pick back up Marion. But here, this is a 4-5 pick and roll. And I understand if I see my center involved, I'm going to manually switch to him on the hedge. So I'm going to let Computer Ola Depot deal with the screen, play the hedge myself, show and recover, perfectly played. And that's very well done. Well, you must be like then, Sam, why do we need to stay attached? Well, actually, stay attached helped a lot there already, but let me show you how exciting it does it. So, Nash got me good here with a dribble move, but because stay attached is on, Turner would never really leave Amare if, like, Amare is in the paint. And because of that, I was able to kind of recover on the shot, but if I defend on ball, what it really means is Turner will always have solid rebound position because stay attached is on. Because if his man is in the paint, he's not going to leave the paint to guard something else. So you can see here in this clip, as Nash brings up the ball, he's setting up for this 1-5 pick and roll, so that means Turner is going to be guarding it. I trusted my on-ball defense to get over the screen here because I see the angle, and you can see how Turner places himself, he's completely attached to Amari. I did this 100% knowing Turner won't hedge out at all because he's on stay attached and as you can see he is glued to Amari. Now this looks bad because you must be like, Sam, we can't get over the screen, it's over because Turner's not hedging out. Right, I get that. So if that does happen and I make that read, I'm just going to switch to Turner myself and hedge out. The key is he's constantly going to be in this position in every pick and roll no matter what because they attach is on. That means if I feel like I can get over the screen, I can try it. And if I don't get over, then I switch to Turner to hedge out. But if I feel like even from the get-go, I can't get over the screen, I would just switch to Turner myself and play whatever hedge is necessary. Because he is on stay attached, his position is going to be consistent 100% of the time against every screen. So if I switch to Turner, I know what to expect and I won't be out of position because AI hedge defense sometimes goes crazy. It's not consistent. So even if you switch to him, you might be really out of position to begin with. But if stay attached is on, he is going to be constantly in this specific stay attached position. So if you can't get over the screen, switch to him. Or if you don't want to get over the screen at all, let AI deal with that stay as Turner. But the point is, he's going to come at the, on, the, the handler at very good position because stay attaches on. And you can easily hedge out yourself as Turner if you want. I didn't need to do that here because I got over the screen just fine. Like I did my job here. And you can see because 
Turner is gonna stay attached on Amari. He's never gonna leave him. So I get over. He doesn't mess up on the screen or the handler. The computer mouse Turner here with stay attached on plays his job on Amari to a T as he gets in the paint. You can even see he's right in the spot he needs to be, like a little bit far off, but not far enough so he can't contest the shot. That is perfect stay attached, moderate off ball settings by Turner. That is glorious right there in that pick and roll. And with stay attached on, you must feel like, oh, then he's not gonna help on drives or on like other things. And that's not true. Stay attached doesn't mean Turner won't help off ball. You see here, he's gunning Stephen Hunter, but I got stay attached on Hunter with a gap because it's Hunter. And you can see as the play develops, like if somebody drives the ball close to the paint or into the paint, Turner will leave his man to contest the shot if the drive, if the attack is in the paint. You can expect your center, even if he stay attached on, like Turner here, will help off on all drives to the paint. You see, there's a drive to the paint by Outlaw here, and Turner is going to get off Hunter, and he's going to go contest the shot because it's a drive to the paint. So he's not going to completely stay attached on Hunter and not do anything. Like every off-ball help setting still applies. So Turner is just as aggressive with that off-ball or switch kind of thing that's going on. Off-ball or switch with the automatic drive help rules. Stay attached does not affect those. You can see here as Barbosa gets into the paint, Turner will completely leave his man to pick up as necessary, but be in between the passing lane because of the settings. That's why stay attached is so good because they come off such an excellent route. So as Turner comes off to help on Barbosa, he'll still be in between that like lane, that passing lane that Barbosa might have hitting Hunter. Perfect defense. As this wing pick and roll develops, uh, Turner has a setting actually on uh, gap off ball and stay attached is still on here. But you can see as the ball gets close to the paint, Turner does not hesitate to pick up, help and contest as needed. Stay attached on does not mean he won't help. He plays help defense just as fine. It is only for on ball screen settings, all right? And so with it on really for your center, he's gonna lock up and board up and he's also gonna put himself in excellent hedge position for you to switch onto so you can play any kind of hedge you want without falling behind that's key so what we got here now is we have good on ball defense and one of the tutorials i showed you before we know how to switch one through four because of the defensive settings i showed you before and now we got stay attached with manual hedge for the five man and also a very good help defensive settings for our five man if there's no pick and roll involved in the play that is essentially our full set of defensive settings that is updated this is the best version you do it like this you're going to be very well covered one through five all right so as promised here uh, is the clip of me doing my defensive settings in a real time do make sure you go ahead and go to my all tutorial playlist and review video number 15 17 18 and 20 those are really important because you will see all of the on-ball defensive mechanics that we use in detail and also why we do the all-switch defense and how you actually do the all-switch defense and why do we, you know, go free quarters, post, bottom, uh, drive help rules and all of that. We also go through in detail how to best use the automatic drive help rules to complement yourself in those videos. So make sure you go over those if you haven't seen them. And uh, as you are playing with this, I suggest on the center, if the guy can shoot mid-range, still put it on moderate. If he if he can't shoot at all, put on gap. But not leave him. Leave him is too much. They get like easy dunks if you go leave him. So put on gap or moderate. But if it's a completely locked down center, you can put on tight. Until they hit some. Otherwise, I will let people shoot until they hit it over center. I mean, on my team, put it on tight because, you know, it's my team. That's just how it is on my team. Okay? So as always, thanks for coming by. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, please leave it in the comment section. At this, after this video, we will have our full. We do have our full set of defensive settings because now we know what to do against centers too. So try this out. Let me know how it works out for you. Uh, feedback will be much appreciated. So I know you know if this helped you guys out. As always, shout out to Bucks GG for the sponsorship and the continued support. I will speak to you guys again very soon.